Welcome to the Spa Girls podcast. Each week we bring you the very best self-publishing tips, tools and resources for authors. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Wendy Vella. And I'm Trudy J. Hello and welcome. And this week we have Alex Newton. Hey Alex. Hello, Hello. Welcome back to the spa. Yes, yes. So for anyone who's been living under a rock, Alex is, I mean, the creator and the person who runs and organizes and does everything i imagine maybe you've got other people helping of the website kalytics um which is an awesome site um, i'm going to read the bio the the bio, so that That's you can so instead of me just riffing off and then we're going to talk about today the um changes that amazon has made to the categories um, among other things we actually have a few other topics as well um for anyone out there like me who's been a bit confused by it and wants to kind of figure out whether i should be changing or not changing or doing whatever alex is going to tell us everything aren't you alex <laughs> I hope I can. So thanks no for having me. Uh, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. But you can tell us all. All right. So I'll I'm read back the... in the spa, which sounds yeah. promising. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, Alex Newton is the creator of Kalytics, a website where you can get in-depth reports on various genres and subgenres on Amazon that will help you find your niche, boost sales in your chosen genre, and give you information to help you stand out in this crowded publishing space. Um, and as I said today, Alex will get out help us get our heads around the recent Amazon category changes and what it means to you as an author, which I am super excited about. So so let's start. Like, what are the ch- changes? Like, if someone doesn't understand what on earth we're talking about, maybe if you could start there, or is that... Well, absolutely. First of all, before we start, you know, oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to hire you then as a copywriter. Finally, I understand what Kaletics is doing. So <laughs> thank you very much for that intro. <laughs> um, yeah, Amazon category changes. It's it's a very broad subject, but it's also a very palatable subject when you you know get to the details of it. And I think what confused a lot of authors is that the changes that we've been seeing have been happening, first of all, not just at one point in time. It's been an ongoing process, which for the first bigger change, which we're going to talk about, started roughly a year ago, uh, September the 8th, 2022. Uh, which then had about six months of confusing authors. And and then there is another change that obviously happened more recently, June this year, Mm. uh, 1st of June, when you were suddenly confined to, uh, first of all, there was good news, the the upload dashboard on the Kindle, uh, where you upload your books on the KDP platform, finally matches the storefront. So... (laughs) You can put your book into what you actually see in the store without having going through that detour of first starting with BISAC industry codes for genres and then call a rep or send an email to them, say, I don't want to be there. I want to be somewhere else. Uh, and that all to up uh, categories. These times are gone. Um, but then also with these changes, Amazon asked many authors, do you have any feedback? And uh, usually in life, the the one who shouts the loudest gets being served. And that may have happened in this survey as well, because Mm -hmm. now as we go through along the month, we suddenly see new categories being introduced Mm -hmm. and um, or some renamed. And uh, and some are actually very good news because we finally have categories for things that we haven't seen before. One case in point. Uh, perhaps not so many authors on this podcast, who knows, but uh, game literature and lit RPG, which, you know, we started reporting on, what was it, five, six years ago, mm-hmm. even before Steven Spielberg started uh, with his adaptation of Ready Player One, which may not have been dubbed at the time as as game, uh, as lit RPG, but still, they found, like, these authors finally found a home, there is a category mm-hmm for mm. it uh, but we have yeah. interesting changes in romance and you know let's talk about all those yeah um so so what so the so the amazon are saying <clears throat> now because it, it's it's we've, we've always been in 10 categories if you if you approached amazon and you asked for it and you you could get yourself in those 10 categories it used to be you nominated two and yeah. then you get asked to be in another eight yeah. and then you're in these eight categories but you only got to see three of them on the dashboard when people were looking at your Um, book but now amazon are saying you can nominate three but you're only in three is kind of the the gist is it have i got that right the gist is well first of all there is a detail about what you saw on the book page was 
always a, a, a different thing because the ranking that used to be shown is if you were ranking well in a print book category, mm -hmm. the book page would show the ranking for the print book. If you were in prime and ranking well there, it would show that. So that was never directly related, but mm -hmm. there was a maximum of three on the book page in very broad terms. And yes, you're right. You are now confined to three to put your book in. Um, having said this, if you still have the legacy categories and you don't touch your book, you you can still have your old eight um, if they still exist, and most of them do. But, um, you know, let's cover these changes step by step yeah, so that yeah, um, uh, that listeners understand. And uh, for those who are not listening but watch on YouTube, I can put on some graphs as well. I, I will make it in a way that hopefully just a listener on the podcast can understand as well. But mm. Uh, that we have a bit of an exhibit here as well. So let me just share the screen and then, you know, we'll we'll get into the details of these oh, changes yeah. that we're... Sorry, I've probably been were... jumping ahead on you, Alex. So. No worries at all. <laughs> it's very unlike no. you to do that, Trini. Know, right? I'm shocked. I'm glad you said that, Sha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... what they say to me, Alex? They're so mean to me. Oh, oh. Where, where, where? Yeah, and they shouldn't. And they shouldn't. <laughs> 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 so... Here we go. Um, can you see this lovely Spa Girls podcast? Uh, uh, loving screen? it. Yes. Oh, good. Yes, loving it. it. There you go. So for, for lack of a better name, I called it today session like Amazon Category Mastery. Yeah, I'm a good copywriter too. And <laughs> um, and you know, di diving into the the today. So what I'd suggest we cover is we. We look at Amazon's changes to obviously the category selection and the bestseller list display briefly. We will talk also in that context about who are the winners and losers and what are the opportunities uh, coming out of that. I'm trying to touch a bit about the do's and don'ts. And, and these may not all be perfect, but uh, sometimes also suggestions because there is no data yet which would support the one or other course and uh you know um, and then briefly you will see how we use data to save time money and create your precious resource time and money mm -hmm. um so for the category changes before we get any further why categories and what are they and i think you have now more than 400 episodes and everybody's gonna go duh you know i know what a category is i would bet that 95 percent of authors and listeners don't have in including amazon staff don't have an exact definition of what a category actually uh -huh. is uh -huh. so um so i i like to cover it just with a, a very few sentences i mean first of all why do categories matter i mean that is pretty clear from a technical point of view the the electronic store needs to know where your book is so it is shown in the right places but in more general terms um the amazon store as a whole, the Amazon bookstore is is very much like a brick and mortar store. They have big promotion displays when you enter the store, and then there are the aisles of the individual individual book genres. And genres are usually called categories in in Amazon language or any e store language. And if you go into the Amazon bookstore here in twenty twenty three usually fairly prominently next to other promotions, they say, here are the best books in top categories with a big button. And you can usually go right into any promotion. Now, these categories are something related to the whole store experience and discoverability, obviously. Um, also on the Kindle store, they show you here best books by categories. Once you click on it, you can cl click further down, like going into the aisles or sections of a library or a bookstore. I think that definition will everybody will have. But on the Amazon store, it gets a little, little more complicated because you have one part of the store where at the at the top of the menu, when you go, for example, into the Kindle part of the store, there it actually reads categories and once you hover over that you get anything from arts and photography as we all know to teen young adult and once you click it you get into further detail 
And you think, okay, that tells me what a category is. And that is obviously important to be discoverable, but there are very important distinctions. Namely, you know, there is this famous or infamous bestseller badge. Um, and the choice where you put your category does have influence where you can actually rank and get such a bestseller badge, which then in turn, if your book is being searched or your genre is being searched on Amazon and your book is being displayed by any chance with such bestseller badge from a consumer psychology point of view, people are obviously more inclined to click on something that has such a badge, which by the way, is probably a reason why Amazon introduced more than 8,000 Kindle categories and more than 4,000 bestseller lists to have, you know, give you 4,000 opportunities to have such badge to <laughs> trick the consumer into clicking yeah. onto a book. But that's a whole different story. Yeah. Now, um, with this intro, okay, we now know it has something to do with the aisles of the library or the aisle of the supermarket. And I think everybody can relate to that. So what is a category? And I tell you, no, you don't know. Because while we do understand that the easy definition is these sections of the Amazon store where the consumers can find your book, like in the sections of a physical library, on the Amazon store, the story is a little more um, complicated. And, and it is a bit more complicated because... First of all, um, there is obviously the Amazon marketplace, uh, which can be US, which can be uh, UK. And these are like different libraries. They have mm -hmm. sometimes different categorization systems. And usually people also go onto the store and might search for something. So you're presented with a list of search results. These are the search results. This is like you go into the library and you go to the librarian and he looks into his index cards and say, okay, we have these 15 choices. You can go into those aisles. Mm -hmm. But here comes the big thing. There are bestseller lists and there are browse categories. And most authors, publishers, and even Amazon staff and their help pages use the two terms interchangeably mm -hmm. when in fact they are not the same thing. Not only from a semantic point of view, from a terminology point of view, but also from a technical point of view. <clears throat> so the bestseller list, when you click on any of these, excuse me, it will show you the top 100 books. Mm -hmm. And these top 100 books are by sales only. So it's really by sales only. Um, it is weighted by recency of sales and number of sales and the relative sales relative to all the other 9 million books. But the point is, it is only 100 books being shown to you at any point in time. Obviously, they change by every two hours or every hour, depending on the size of category. Mm -hmm. And they are in order of sales. A category like the aisle of the supermarket, that's a bestseller list, but the category is also sometimes uh, known as browse categories. This is what you usually find on the left-hand side when you start browsing through the store, or if you go through that top menu where it says category, and these show you basically the whole catalog, catalog of books in a very category. Um, the display is capped at 6,400, 400 pages, I think, times 16 books. But these give you a feel for the size of category, for the competitiveness of your genre. And um, what's important too, the search results are not sorted by order of sales. They are sorted by, similar to the search results, by the whole Amazon gamut of, of, mm. of algorithm, um, depending on where do they earn money? Is it an editor's pick? Is it some some recommendation? Does it have plenty of reviews, good reviews, and so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. That is where basically the algorithm, other than sales, which do play a role in the algorithm as one factor, but the whole algorithm shows different things. So you've just blown my mind. So when you yeah, go into like urban fantasy, let's, that's what I write. If I go to the urban fantasy category and it's the one, you know, and it goes book number one, book number two, whatever, that is not actually the best-selling books. That's no, maybe. It, 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 
Well, if you go to the bestsellers, let me just show you no, here no. on the screen. So if you go to uh, in the store, you go to bestsellers and more, mm -hmm. which I'm doing here for those who just listen. Bestsellers and more. You go to Kindle bestsellers as an example. And uh, then actually there are different Kindle stores, right? There is Kindle Short Read, Singles, Bella, eBooks. You want to go to eBooks, separate, the main store as we know it. And then for Paranormal and Urban, you'd obviously go to Science Fiction and Fantasy. And you already see it, it reads bestsellers and you go to Fantasy and I think there should be in there Paranormal and Urban at the very bottom so this gives you now a list of 100 books and <clears throat> with various degrees of relevance as we all know to yeah. the actual urban fantasy genre because we already yeah. see here a couple of uh, there will be lots of romance in there as well and, Harry Potter, which I and so Harry Potter. these <laughs> are really sorted by level of sales uh -huh. okay however you now go not through the bestseller list, but if we go through categories okay. here, and I start with science, um, where is it actually here? Science fiction and fantasy. We click on a category. First of all, it will show you all sorts of recommendations, right? And then you go onto the left sidebar mm -hmm. where it will usually here have the split science fiction splits into fantasy. And then you, once we go to um, the paranormal and urban section here, now watch mm -hmm. what will happen, paranormal and urban. First of all, there will be all sorts of editors, pigs, Goodreads, choice editors. So first, there's direct intervention by Amazon yeah. because mm -hmm. this is what they want to sell to you. Whether, but you will see Call of here, a Call of Mist and Fury, the Sarah Mass books, all three are at the very top of this category. Um, they are displayed, they are not necessarily the number one title in that bestseller list that we jo just saw, and we just yeah. saw it, they are not. Oh. But you see here over 50,000 results. Yeah. And by the way, also that number is fundamentally flawed because they just capped it at 50,000, sometimes at 70,000. In paranormal and urban, it's by now 100,000 because we count the increment every month and a certain rate for uh, people, uh, books leaving the market. So these results here, and once you click on search, see all results at the bottom of the page, mm -hmm. you get this sequence of books and you mm -hmm. see... This is not necessarily by level of sales. In fact, the very first page is all Goodreads choice, which is a new thing on Amazon. Here is bestsellers, editors picks. You see thousands of reviews. And once you click onto the individual books and look at their sales ranks, you will actually see they're not necessarily the highest ranking books. And where you see the bestseller badge, it may be in one of these, you know, more obscure categories, not necessarily, not necessarily the big ones. Then they try to sell you all the Harry Potters, uh, then some paranormal romance. You get the idea. Yeah. So without losing ourselves, I want to first of all convey the concept that a bestseller list is not a category because, and here comes the kicker. There are way more browse categories than there are bestsellers. Um, we, on the Kindle store, we track about 8,000 and we took it a step further. We clicked the actual click path like we just mm -hmm. did. Okay, I click from sci-fi into, uh, you know, next level down, next level down. And just as one example, if you go through categories, there are eight category browse paths and thus browse categories or popularity lists that they're sometimes called for historical biographies in the United Kingdom. So there is nonfiction wow. history, historical biographies, United Kingdom, but I could also click biographies and memoirs starting there, then historical, then Europe, then United Kingdom. Oh. They are all different categories, but they all lead to one and the same bestseller list. Gotcha. You can rank it. Wow. So we will later go into how do you then get into the category and what does what does um, the Kindle upload dashboard now actually show? Does it show um, categories or bestseller lists? 
stay on this podcast to get the answer. <laughs> <laughs> don't go away. Right? Now that is, don't go away. That is a very important question. So obviously some changes have been, um, have been happening. And the most recent ones are actually not about these three category limitations, the most recent ones. And that's why we thought about talking in the podcast. After all the changes that happened, Amazon started probably also asking authors about feedback. And uh, with this whole turmoil going on, we, we have new, uh, new categories in, entering in. So for example, if we if we go into the romance section of the store, I think there will be good and bad news for romance authors. So with this whole turmoil of changes in, in the romance category, for example, I was completely surprised last week to find out that the romance inspirational subcategory, so a big, big subcategory in romance got dropped entirely. Yes, that's wow. right, you know. Uh, you know, I always thought, hey, inspiration, it's a, it's a big thing yeah. um, next to the clean and wholesome romance one, which is a separate one. Now, having said this, though, historical, uh, sorry, inspirational romance had a lot of subcategories, you know, including um, many Christian fiction. Most of these were like Christian fiction subcategories. Mm -hmm. And all of these survived. So they still exist, but they are now in, in different, deeper category paths elsewhere. For example, oh. you have to look for Christian fiction, and there you'd find all those categories still. Uh, on the other side, some of these subcategories actually got a promotion. And I think one could be equally surprised by that, because if you now go into, which is sort of interesting, mm -hmm. if you go back to the Amazon store, and you were to go uh, again to uh, to to bestsellers, and so not categories, but bestsellers. Well, actually, you can also show it on the category side. But if you go to bestsellers, which many purchases may do to see what's what's currently selling and trending. So if we go to the romance bestseller list, and on the very <clears throat> left hand side. We now have mm. Amish romance ah. as the second choice being shown in the alphabetical order. Mm. So Amish romance got a promotion, yeah. Oh. As did um, at the very bottom, we have now Western and frontier romance, and this is where many of these inspirational ones survived, as well as in the Christian fiction category. When you go to um, to that part of the store or bestseller list. Can I just ask you quickly, because I clean and wholesome, sure. is that that's not interchangeable necessarily with inspirational? It's again, like you're not necessarily religious um, or Christian or Amish in the clean and wholesome. Is that it's not like there's not a lot of books that were Obviously, really inspirational there's... that are now in clean and wholesome, or is it um, a completely different category? Obviously, there is no, there is a lot of academic debate as to what constitutes clean and wholesome and is mm -hmm. clean a good term or not. It's what Amazon yeah. chose to, but the categories are not necessarily governed. But if you look at the actual bestseller list, the, I think the intent of the clean and wholesome one is, is basically, it's, it's not steamy or not as steamy. It is, um, you know, fade to black or, you know, no explicit scenes and, and, and you will find both contemporary and historical books in there. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, Western romance or the inspirational one, they used to be all faith-based, clean and wholesome romance um, books. So with at least some usually Christian themes entering entering into the equation. For one, okay. it could be one. Um, the other is it's, it's just... Yeah, I, I want to inspire you, right? So, but um, from a technical point of view, now where the categories ended up, it's more ha had more to do with Christian fiction mm. than any general inspirational literature. I guess that's to my mind. That's why, like, romance inspirational doesn't like. I know that it's often a um, one that has, um, I don't know, like religious. Um, underlying themes I guess 
but the name romance inspirational doesn't really tell you that if you were someone coming in you didn't understand or know that that was kind mm. of the jargon being very used true. i can yeah, kind of yeah. get why that maybe exactly. you're saying christian exactly. fiction is a yeah yeah exactly yeah. right so if you are a reader who basically i want to have this inspirational second chance roman right to be inspired by how how they finally come together and uh yeah that's exactly not what was um uh, uh mm. to be found necessarily yeah, under that yeah. so that, that's at least a change and um but the other changes happening in romans are sometimes where i where are we from a research point of view go like how do they come up with that idea so the, the other one is they introduced romance in unifilm as a new subcategory huh. and Immediately, I think there are so many other terms that would merit a new subcategory instead of this one, you know, yeah. uh, while it's, it's obviously great that you now have a home for uh, for the firefighters and rangers and law enforcement, you name it. But it's also from a logic point of view, there is already romance military. Now military yeah. is only one special kind of uniform. But you see from a pure logical yeah. point of view, you cannot. I think you it's sort of redundant. Yeah. But or part redundant. And the other thing is, I think every Romans author listening to the podcast will immediately say, Well, I can name 15 other tropes or character tropes, characters yeah. that have more sales than firefighters. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. So there is still no Kindle billionaire romance category on, on the sub level. There is no mm. mafia boss. There is and, and all these tropes, there is no dark romance category. All these I would sell romance in uniform probably by a factor of twenty, it's and so um, it's such why, a do, why weird... do you think that is though? What, why have they done that? Um, my out. well, thinking out aloud. First of all, there are is also a hierarchy for print books or uh, a cross format bestseller list. Perhaps somebody says, hey, we have uniform there. You know, why don't we put it in here too? But it's never complete because there is a print book bill or a cross format billionaire bestseller list. Yeah. Mm. They haven't it's done really this. not. It's not that sexy, romance in uniform. At least military romance sounds kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> romance in uniform <laughs> doesn't, doesn't say firefighters or rangers, you know, like it's not very. Yeah. Um... Also, the label, uh, I think, could be debated, but. Um, that's that's one thing how do these changes happen sometimes frankly and no offense taken but sometimes i really think it's it's like a a coder a summer intern mm -hmm. being told hey why don't you put this in there there's no yeah. holistic like let's really think this <laughs> through again <laughs> organically yeah. grown yes. and you know then uh, some executives gets a call from harlequin and they say hey we have all these uh, yeah. firefighter romances which we want to upload here and we don't have a okay oh let's put something in there yeah I guess mm -hmm. that is sort of how it happens. Okay. Yeah. And it and now sense. that they did the surveys on what do you think about the new upload technicalities, right? <laughs> um, who shouts aloud? And same thing, historical romance. I, I think it's a good thing. Mm. Where in historical romance, which is already a very big category they have, mm -hmm. you have Regency, Victorian, Medieval, Scottish, you know, you name it. Uh, they now introduce, I think, which is a good thing. They introduced a 20th century historical romance one, because I think so far publishers would say anything, you know, before 1950 or depending on the publisher before the Vietnam War could be deemed historical romance. But I think we've all grown older and it's no longer the year 1995. We're in a yeah. new century. Mm. And, uh, you know, to a young reader, something, yeah. uh, a romance in the 70s is probably very historical because the person wasn't born there, yeah. right? So There are, there are grown-up readers who are born in the in the 21st century, you know? Yeah. They, they were not alive, <laughs> who are adults exactly. now. Yeah. Stop it. Exactly. <laughs> but I think that's uh, that's the right step forward. But then again, here, okay, I, I think from a logical completeness point of view, yeah, maybe you do want to have a uh, an aisle in the library for a gilded age, gilded age uh, historical romance. Um, it's it's not that it has very high sales; it's a very small niche category. But you know, if you go logically through the periods of time, I think it makes sense. But then they mix it with characters, right? Not periods. Uh, suddenly you now have a new Viking romance mm -hmm. category. And it just shows you that's probably 
they get emails from authors where can i put my viking books you know is it medieval no it's not and and uh, yeah. um uh, but there is an ancient time category in historical romance so you see it, it is what it is but i know many of you are interested in what are the new categories can i put my book in there is there competitive advantages if i do and yes um and unfortunately we had for example one one interesting one which struck we're just doing actually the historical romance annual research and yesterday it was so funny when we talk about these changes that happened already a year ago, there is Renaissance romance, right? Mm. And when Amazon introduced that first limitation of showing a book in only three bestsellers, we touch upon that in just a second, um, many books were pushed out of the Roma, the Renaissance romance category. And finally, for a few weeks, you had in this small category, actually some books that had to do something with Renaissance. <laughs> but now um. every even especially now that the the category upload is sort of self-service you have thousands of tactical placements of regency romance novels who just say hey i don't want to be put in the regency where i go in there but let's have a small category as well let's just choose renaissance uh, even if the book has nothing to do uh, yeah. with renaissance what um. so so is that something this that's is gonna because I uh, in part I was thinking that was why they were making some of these changes to try and stop people being you know that to, to limit how many categories they could be in so that they were more specific and to limit people you know having 10 categories and having some of those categories completely irrelevant to the what the book was actually about or whatever exactly what would you talking about is what some label category pollution mm. and this is where it now becomes interesting because i brought you some research on what they changed an opinion about what they might have intended and what now actually happened <laughs> in, in the market <laughs> this is when humans get involved with things yeah right? yeah you can code exactly. all you want but when yeah. it's gets down to the people <laughs> and 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 that is exactly right so well, what were these fundamental changes to the category system some of you may be aware some of you maybe not but there is actually two changes um two changes that happened the, the more recent one that most people talk about is the one that affects the upload of your book and that is what happened june this year june 1st 2023 where you suddenly then got a mail or this new support page that you can now choose three categories in the up during the upload process and you can choose your own category so now it's a self-service and we're no longer accepting requests to add or update categories so what's the good news the good news is obviously you can now go into the dashboard and finally you find the same categories as you would find in the storefront but also there by the way it's not perfect and um and you find categories in there that don't even exist in the storefront hierarchy <laughs> because it's some legacy nodes of the browse tree that some coder still put into the upload dashboard so it's and and um and, and oh, there are a I lot of a tip would be there. to check and make sure you can find the category in the on Amazon store before you took the, the box inside the exactly. So yeah. e either you refer to our database because we always really track what is on the storefront. Mm. Um and uh be before you actually you know go into into there. Now you can click usually once you select it, you can also click on the browse tree. It takes you to the store, but if you don't see like a hierarchy listing on the left-hand sidebar, it shows you that you ended up in a deprecated category that do doesn't actually exist in, in the store. Um, so that is one thing what happened. But the good news is, let, let's focus on the positive. The good news mm. is, finally, there is a match between the back end and the front end of the store, which awesome. in, uh, after, after more, than, must, after more than 10 years of Kindle is, 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 is a good them. thing. This must save them so many man hours. Like this is like like yeah. oh, people now they don't have to take the emails of people saying can you please just do this and do that? exactly so this whole thing of either contacting 
them KDP support, or uh, you could also, by the way, go through Author Central, mm-hmm. uh, at, at least in the in the US, and and you know that's been stopped. So, but when you ask me what was the intention of that being stopped, well, you you can imagine with you know more than hundred thousand indie authors publishing their books, how many staff they mm-hmm. must have employed to yeah, take your calls today. or yeah. administer your emails and, mm-hmm. and get your questions answered. So I think here, the first intention is purely if a new executive comes on board, what do we spend our time on? Make this self-service. Mm-hmm. So I think the first intention of this is a pure cost yeah. cutting uh, thing on, and complexity reduction. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and by the way, in the process, they still say we reserve the right to change categories right so you can you can add you they're shown on lies but they not always match if, if they think there there's reason to change so in a way they keep the door open but i'm not sure whether it's really human beings intervening there um so much but but as said the good news is you now have an alignment between at the mm-hmm. one side on the left here your yeah. new category dashboard there is on the right hand side the store and, you know, we've had the alignment between store and our database since 2014, and it now took them almost a decade to, to uh, there's not to mean. mean it blows, arrogant, it blows but... your mind that this is, I remember first going on here going, well, where's the, what What do you mean we can't just put the categories that are yeah, always yeah. on in the back end? Like, why are we using these categories, you know? Yeah. It was, yeah, and the, and the page, the special page that told you what keywords you had to put in to get into certain categories that weren't yeah, listed all about... on the, yeah. Exactly, because you now mentioned one thing with, that many new authors on the podcast may not even have experienced. But if we, if we look through the history of, of this, uh, the, in, in those days where you had this big mess, mismatch between the left-hand side, what you see in your dashboard, and the right-hand side, what the people say in the, on the store, you remember there was even a time when you, even before you could contact them, you had to choose a industry BISEC code, for example, mm-hmm. for science fiction, and then you had to abuse or you know repurpose your seven keyword fields to then force the backend by way of keywords to yeah. force your book into the right category. Mm-hmm. And and at that time, you also had so many authors who suddenly said, my book is now in a category I never intended it to be. Well, it ended up there because they unintentionally had put a keyword that forces the book into a certain category. And by the way, to the present day, sometimes people wonder, isn't there still some, you know, legacy part of the algorithm that still can trigger those um, unintended changes? But that is what happened. But... Um, the whole process of change started already a year ago. Mm-hmm. And I think this is where the intention might have been. That that was before this self-service. And this was where they started making changes that probably had to do with two things, with this category pollution topic, mm-hmm. but also with the very fact that if you can put your book into, say, 10 categories, and by the way, if you were a VIP, such as J.K. Rowling, um, Harry Potter book number one is still, I think, in 19 categories as we speak in the back end. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the big problem, I think, and Amazon does want to make the consumer happy, not necessarily the publisher or author. And I think the big consumer problem was if you start browsing through those bestseller lists and you basically see the very same book, like a Harry Potter book in almost any teen young adult bestseller list you browse through, it's not an optimal experience, right? And in mm-hmm. fact, in the, if if Harry Potter had a Christmas time promotion, you would literally see Harry Potter leading in, in you know, more than 12, 18 categories yes. be, being displayed. So what did they do? That was the first big change that happened exactly a year ago a little more than a year ago, September 8th, they started introducing, that's when they sent this first email, which caused a big first turmoil amongst authors, when they had a policy change early September 22, where they said books can be ranked 
in up to three bestseller categories. See how they mix up yeah. the terms. They now call it bestseller categories. At least it's bestseller list. That's good. Regardless of how many book categories the book may feature within. So in, translated in, in other, no matter in how many back end categories you've registered your book with. And um, then de determining what influences where it is shown. Well, consumer activity influences that. Presumably, if your book was sold through a certain click through and purchased through visiting somebody visiting a certain category that may have influenced that it now appears in that category. Mm -hmm. But what did that do in the market? It was huge in, in Facebook groups because many, many, many categories, if you measure the average sales rank of the top 20 titles, took a huge hit. Now, why did they take a huge hit? Why did the average sales rank of a category drop? Well, it's very understandable because if if you tell a Harry Potter book, you are ranked, say, 50 in the whole Amazon Kindle store, but we display you now only in three bestseller lists, no matter which mm -hmm. ones they are, but it's now limited to three, that high-ranking Harry Potter book will vanish from all those other bestseller lists where it used to be shown and where now the thing is suppressed. And many high-ranking books were basically forced out of uh, out of the bestseller list. So we, we, for example, had this very interesting example here in Mystery Thriller Suspense Occult, where right um, after that policy change, and um, and and today you you see a lot of say academy romance type type of books in in that um, in that category today. Mm -hmm. But many of the super high ranking ones were pushed out of it. Now it's been recovering again a bit, but at the point in time before the change, it was very interesting. For example, there was. A, a book and is still ranking sky high in the Kindle store to the present day, this haunting Adeline, you know, a, a dark, dark romance title. And that was ranked 47. So in the top 50 of the Kindle store. And you can check obviously in the Amazon backend in how many categories were that was that book listed. So it was listed in eight Kindle categories. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, it would no longer be ranking in all those eight, which it could with a store sales rank of 47, but it thereof only then ranked in three, Ghost okay. Suspense, Contemporary Romance, and Gothic Romance. So at the point in time, authors who obviously had high ranking books and a lot of categories, they obviously said, hey, I'm, I'm losing visibility here because yeah. they were only ranked in three despite having more possibilities. Mm. And so the display was suddenly suppressed into yeah. uh, five out of the of these eight. And um, but then you had other people who say, no, no, but I did see it's not three. So Amazon sends out this letter with you. It's limited to three. But you suddenly have people. But wait, didn't I see the book ranked in more than three bestseller lists in the Kindle store? And the answer was, yes, you did. And that's still the case today. And here's why. When they say it is three rankings, it is three bestseller lists, such as in this case, ghosts in suspense, contemporary romance and gothic romance. But if the book is good enough in the whole store, it will automatically rank also in these parent categories. So it will also rank in Mr. Thriller Suspense. It will rank in the overall MTS category. It will rank in the overall romance category and this is for example one lesson for today so if you if you put your book into the category you also per amazon's recommendation you want to be as detailed as possible mm -hmm. because if your book ranks in say mystery thriller suspense suspense ghosts and it is you have a big promotion going on and it has a good store-wide sales rank, it will then automatically rank in all the parent categories such as suspense, MTS, and in the whole Kindle store. Nobody. So, so go deep. There was an, so go deep. That was uh, is the is the right mm -hmm. strategy there. Mm -hmm. And um and then for those of you 
who still have a legacy of, say, up to eight categories. There was also another interesting observation, which was this. Is the book's display only suppressed in these bestseller lists? And this is now why we have this important distinction between bestseller lists and browse categories. Because what we found was it is still listed in eight back-end categories, so is the display also dispress, uh, uh, suppressed in those? And the answer is no. So for example, one of those categories where that book at the time was no longer being shown in the bestseller list was crime fiction vigilante justice. But if you went to the browse category, it was still popularly shown at the very top of the browse category. Uh -huh. So that is another important lesson if you if you to the present day have books which you had at one point in time successfully put into a 10 categories, you may want to, although Amazon recommends that you, you know, you cannot no longer do it and you want to be specific and yes, you should be, but we all know there's genre blends and uh, there are many possible avenues to roam and, and mm -hmm, sometimes yeah. there is a good fit. Mm. Um, I would think twice before I touch Mm -hmm. my category is because the display in the dashboard shows you um you wipe your existing categories if you now do the change in the change. dashboard but this tells me here if you are successfully on the librarian's card for these eight aisles of the supermarket yeah um they don't necessarily purge you out of those so mm. at this point <laughs> At, at this point yeah <laughs> yeah so do you have a list somewhere in calytics or is there somewhere that you can go to look at what are the what are the bestseller um so i call it categories the best you know the category lists that are, have bestseller lists and the ones that don't like how do we the difference between yeah so them? so basically in 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 our database you uh, uh what what you have right now is um, you have the list of those eight thousand. So, so for example, if we if we go into um, let's just list romance for argument's sake, and you see on the right hand side, we have a link to um, to basically both both things. The bestsellers. So, for example, if I have here, uh, let's take here classics romance. If I click on BSL, it takes me to the bestseller list right and this would be the classics ones and you see even with it especially now with the self-service the category is even more ungoverned than it, than it was before you can That's put not your what book I would have in expected for classic romance oh. no wouldn't it pucking around with grumpy billionaire number one title <laughs> but what does classic romance even mean exactly like it's, it's I means was assuming... nothing it's like yeah. classic I was expecting Jane Austen or something. I don't know why. Oh. Exactly. Not a pumpkin which, and a patch. Which, which you do find, oh, but yeah. you know, there there you go. So so you see immediately, and that would be my big crit criticism of the new system. We found something there yesterday, but before we go there, so you could also then in the database click on <clears throat> category. And you see, by the way the type of books that are being recommended in the browse category by Amazon is a, it's not necessarily all classics, but it's a completely different set of books. Yeah. Right? Wow. And Interesting. that is why the distinction is important. And um, what we do have now, many, many things lead to Rome. So what we have here on the very right hand side is a, a number and that is the unique browse note so mm -hmm. uh, you you see what the bestseller list actually is and if that number reappears and we could now search for that number in the database mm. and it appears several times you know the, this is a set of redundant categories but you simply click on the bestseller list button and you see which of these paths is is actually the the bestseller list path where you can rank it now the good news is the amazon dashboard by the way will prevent you from putting your book into redundant categories that that's where at least they put a, in a little bit of intelligence okay. because okay. if you 
in the dashboard, if you click on one of these, for example, eight paths on UK-based historical, what did we have, biographies and memoirs, right? Mm -hmm. If you choose one of them, it will gray out all the other ones that also lead to the very same bestseller list. Mm -hmm. that, that is at least the, the good news, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what the main big changes were. So to recap, there's individual tactical changes, like suddenly you find now a new romance category or you a new game lit category, and that's probably good. Yeah. Um, the the display, any book can now only rank in and be shown in three bestseller lists, which I think is a good thing too, because it leads to the phenomenon that the store is not just plastered with Harry Potter's and Hey, no offense taken, Zodiac Academy books. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously Caroline and uh, Suzanne doing a great job with these books. But, you know, if if every best uh, list has only the same books at the top, mm. it's not great for consumer choice. Mm. And the yeah. third change is you can now, uh, good news, upload the book into what you see on the store storefront. Mm. But... I think like in any change, there are winners and losers. And um, I think what we saw, what certainly started, if we look at who the winners and, and, and losers are, as said before, many of the categories mm -hmm. took took a sort of hit on the, on the sales rank. Yeah. And I think the most pronounced one were teen young adult. Um, so hmm. you know if you if you plot the sales <laughs> ranks of romance mts sci-fi and teen young adult over a period of five years in the grander scheme of things romance mts and sci-fi fantasy were almost unaffected if hmm. you start plotting teen young adult on the same chart because Ouch. in september 22 when the change happened you remember many romance authors put their books into teen young adult categories yeah. right high-ranking books now, if those books already used up their rankings in three romance categories, they would no longer be shown in, in teen young adult. And this is also only, or even aggravated now that during this upload, you now have to commit to, if you ch choose one category for your book as teen young adult, the other two have to be teen young adult too. You can um. no longer mix and match. And that stopped this whole tactical placements of... You had it also in urban fantasy and paranormal romance where the urban fantasy authors put their book into these myths and legends and fairy tale categories in teen young adult. Now, you no longer want to do that because your book is no longer be shown in the adult categories. So does it? Can I just ask a silly question? So I can, see, I, can, I can understand from what you're saying that so the, the average rank of the books that are showing up in the teen and young adult um, categories are lower. But does that actually affect, like, people still go to those top, you know, those categories, you know, they'd still go to teen and young adult categories. Does it matter if the top books that are, are books that are ranking lower on the overall store? Do you know what I mean? No, not at all. In, in fact, I think it's good news yeah. for two reasons. Okay. Because uh, especially for us, whom we measure the average sales ranks of these top books every month mm -hmm. and then plot them in, in these graphs here, I think we now have a much more realistic picture of what the, the, the truer sales level of a kid's book category actually yeah. is because it's no longer that polluted, right? Mm -hmm. But here comes the catch. You, you see this big, big drop here in, in September last year. And for the first two, three months, Category pollution improved because it was exactly by the means of this algorithm that, uh, say, a romance book no no longer ranked it there, and that's good news. But what's happening now is now the system is completely self-service, okay? And this is where the human factor <laughs> enters in. Now, Amazon tells you how do you, how should you choose your category? And obviously they say, um, it should be topical fit. And we say uh, on top of it, look at the level of sales versus the level of competition, which we covered in the, you know, in the last podcast, our, our map of, of all the genres, how many titles do you have in there? 
the further you go on the right on our map, the higher up, the, the better the sales rank. So you, you can have some economic judgment, but that's not today's topic. What's debate today's topic is when Amazon says, um, you know, and they say, choose the right detail level. And they obviously say you should put your books into where the accuracy is. Now, that is good unless you have scammers or human factor entering in. Because before this self-service, you had to at least email them or contact an agent. And that agent, probably if it was a good one, would have a look at the book and say, is your request at least roughly matching with what your book is? Mm -hmm. So depending on the person who was dealing with your request, it was not automated. You still had a human person looking at the request. Now they ask you, please put a tick mark if your book is adult content. If you're a scammer trying to upload you know, erotica junk book, you exactly don't take that. And you say, great, let me try to get into this kid's book category. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. it's exactly the opposite of what's happening. So what, and, and we see it already in the numbers. Yeah. Um, for, for example, in historical, in historical romance, um, you know, and before we go to that, right, in historical romance, Usually out of the, first of all, also with the advent of AI, we, we have the number of books entering the market have, has almost doubled. Uh -huh. And it's a factor of AI. It's the factor of new historical romance categories coming on board and uh, some mass uploads by some authors who now adjust their categories. And that's uh -huh. fair enough. But what we discovered is that before that self-service, you'd have about four to 5% of the titles, which were in fact pornography, you know, yeah. so not even erotica, pornography. And um, that ratio has climbed up within two months. It has doubled wow. and is now at 10 to 11%. Wow. And I think at some point in time, although the it's, it's always, you know, the change is well intended, mm -hmm. But is the outcome what you expect? And this is yeah. this is where I start putting my first question marks in there because if you leave, unless they now, you know, they probably would have the tools of having AI go through the book descriptions and mm -hmm. through the book titles and the chosen category and say, this is not a fit and probably will have. But right now we see already, like always, people abusing the system say, great, no, no longer an agent there. Let's put my book into where it's only whatever travel travel photography, mm -hmm. South Carolina. Only three books in there. Let's put it in there. That's what you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So is there is there anyone system. is there anyone or any acknowledgement or any murmurings that you're aware of of them kind of being aware of these issues and that maybe something might happen? Will change or is it well I don't, I don't know i i will be i will be presenting um at 20 books vegas in in a month um mm -hmm. at this big indie conference and i'm hearing that there will be 18 amazon representatives i will be presenting part of these results and uh, perhaps awareness can be raised from the mm -hmm. and, and i think there's not just um authors it's also the consumer side yeah um mm -hmm. And that's the side that they really care about, to be honest. So I'm thinking of it, if you have an outraged mother that's got, you know, some really porno book and little <laughs> Johnny's eight-year-old, you know, eighth yeah. grade reading list. Yeah, I can see that, that, that you would get upset consumers contacting them would probably rank over upset authors, I would say. Yeah. Just, yeah, probably. Just a wild guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, and and um, I uh, and, and one can be concerned there. Uh, I mean, yeah. especially in the teen, young, adult, and kids books, and now, now obviously, also they're well intended. They now say you have to specify the target age group of your mm -hmm. book, and you, you you have to say it's a, it's kid books or not. They say you have to say whether it's adult content, mm -hmm. and um, 
of course, many authors don't click the adult content box because they don't want the book to be running that risk of being dungeon with, which uh, basically means the book is being suppressed in search results, right? So um, we could do a whole seminar, I think, on the question of how about adult content that would yeah. lead to too far. And th there are people actually, authors contacted Amazon on uh, what's the impact of that new tick mark box that you that you have to have to click on the big question shall i shall i say yes or no and they say is there six sex sexually explicit images or a title you know in other parts of the amazon support pages it says we yeah here you talk about images and title but how about the content of 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 the book so you see there is immediately a, a discussion and some authors frankly say no i'm mm. i'm not ticking i'm not ticking uh, i'm not ticking the box you know even if the primary audience is is adult so mm. it, it's a big topic and yeah. it is what it is <laughs> and it's sort of isn't it typical and it you know the biggest technology technology company in the world and you make these changes and you still have these unintended consequences i'm guessing unintended you know it, it's sort of yeah yeah i don't know there's a there's a metaphor in there somewhere i don't know where they've, it is but... they've been trying to fix a problem yeah. and they've almost in some ways made it worse um, yeah you know and uh <laughs> I you still know, think I mean, that when it, when it hits their bottom line in terms of readers, in terms of people yeah. not what staying on KU, in terms of customers upset, I think that's personally, that's my call. That's my call. But we shall see. The, the great behemoth that is Amazon isn't always the fastest to move either. So, yeah. You know, and, and we can just check, you know, let's say in the title, erotic, and yeah. In the subject, I don't know, you know, children and teens, you know, you click on it. Um, this time, you know, at least there is no search results. So a time, yeah. you know, we could use other terms and, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you, exactly. you, you would, you would certainly start getting, yeah. start getting results. Here yeah. we go. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, children, exactly. you have your the steam. Okay. Steam yeah. robot. These are, but I'm, I have probably mo lots of screenshots of, yeah. of all examples. Yeah. But getting better you know well hopefully uh, this I mean, is where ai can surely come in i mean i would have thought this would be a sitting duck for ai to go through you know and absolutely analyze the content absolutely very yeah. interesting so interesting yeah i hope we we didn't now confuse uh no, uh, that know, was really good that, it was a really than, good explanation because i've got to good, confess but... i've been reading um just the different emails that came out with the changes and it just made my eyes cross <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the simplicity <laughs> of it is you know if, if you have your categories already all in order you may not even want to touch them you know yeah. Yeah. because yeah have more that's i think what we learned if it's new okay i i think i can relate to all those urban fantasy authors you know who basically say we have a young adult audience as well as and we all know mm -hmm. many teen, teen novels are also read by by uh adults in fact the majority is yeah and yeah. and you go like hmm is is it the right thing to have this confinement and doubling down in teen young adult um, but I think the overall concern remains unsolved that we have still a lot of category pollution for one, and that a completely self and even a AI ungoverned self service system is probably worse than a human intervention type of system. And that's mm. where I have a bit of a question mark right now, yeah. looking at the results at the first results. Yeah. Gosh, wow. okay. Well, we look forward to hearing your report from November at the conference. And yeah. hopefully you'll get some one on one time with or one to eighteen time with them and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, explain it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. So yeah. yeah so it's that's very confusing. What, yeah. I mean, what? for a new author it's confusing too, isn't it? It's old it's hard enough for us old hands. Well, I, I think a new author doesn't have the decision. It's simpler, they just have yeah. To yeah, possibly, possibly, yeah. Whereas of course. we have yeah. 10 on some of our books, and now we yeah. have to go, do yeah. I just go back to the three? And No, I'd leave it. Or I think you leave it. 10. Yeah. If they're correct, I'd leave. Well, exactly. I think after what Alex has said, I, that's definitely what I'm going to do. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm just going to yeah. leave them. Yeah, definitely. Are there, are there any cases, Alex, where, where you would recommend someone not like you know switch to the three new ones like is there a 
uh, some kind of benefit that I kind of can't see at the moment? Well, I, I let you be the judge. You know, if if you look at, um, you know, how would you decide if 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 I understand the question correctly? If if you're a J.K. Rowling, right, and you have the Harry Potter books, and you type in Harry Potter as a search query, and you get here all these nice bestseller badges mm. for different titles, right? <laughs> now the fact is, uh, this is I ran this check a couple of weeks back i guess it's still the case at, at least with the new system if i check the asin for uh the sorcerer stone it is still categorized in 19 categories i haven't checked it yesterday but it was a few weeks back so in the brown and that spans teen young adult sci-fi fantasy kids book and even literature and fiction action and adventure yes. fiction I just want to bring this up. It's in children's ebooks, children's growing up and facts of life books, children's friendship and social skills, friendship. It's like, isn't that a non-fiction kind of category? Like, why is it? But well, it doesn't book? say, huh? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't say. And that's, Amazon never came up with that. Uh, intuitively, you would say, well, if I want to look at books about orphans and foster homes, mm -hmm. <laughs> then I would expect it to be non-fiction. Well, yeah. these categories have been there on the Sorcerer's Stone for the last, for, for whatever. First time I checked seven years ago, it was these categories. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, Harry Potter is an orphan. Should it be in there? I would clearly say no. You know, it, it some should friends. But also yeah. Harry Potter's real because it, it, the bottom um, category there is teen and young adult humor, non-fiction ebooks. So yeah, clearly, there you go. There so we go. It's all real. So I let you be the judge. If if I was Pottermore Publishing and I see my book with all those nice bestseller badges, yeah. which are still being earned now, you know. I let you be the judge. How mm. would you decide? Would you now say, yeah. hey, let's purge all the 19 categories yeah, that yeah, yeah. the IP sales rep gave me eight years ago? I'm not sure I'd do that. And you can't and just take one out. It. You said before, you can't just take one out. You have to, like, as soon as you click that to change. Exactly. To, so as soon as you're clean. racing, you, you, as soon as you, you basically wipe what you achieved. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the other thing you also, and with that, you wipe anything that the algorithm history oh. has learned Ooh. about your, your book i just shuddered actually. oh no that that's even shudder worse. went down my spine no yeah, oh. yeah so so for new books right and then for new books i could even be more provocative um it's untested so far and i and and frankly i will have to ask authors now that they observe their books well can can you i haven't clicked through can you choose only one category instead of three because there is this thing where people ah. say uh on on which on which in which categories does my book now show up ah. when it's the best you know but what if i choose i'm you know, listeners, please test it and write me yeah. a mail to support it. Kayleigh, I think so you come can. I think you it's, can choose. It's one. just a wild idea. Mm -hmm. How about you select that one category where you definitely want to be shown? You choose that one, and you let the algorithm learn, and then you start adding a secondary one and a tertiary mm -hmm. one later on. I haven't mm -hmm. tested that strategy, but that's mm -hmm. a question to the audience mm -hmm. who might want that to would test be very it. Very interesting let me know. to test that one let me know how it goes because mm -hmm. that way you may have a little more control as to mm -hmm. you know what the algorithm is hurt. primary category wow. for you. yeah so sometimes less is more so for mm -hmm. a new book i don't know yeah could yeah. be sure. strategy mm -hmm. perhaps i'm talking nonsense here but no, at least I what really uh, i would investigate it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. okay gosh. wow gosh my head's spinning yeah I feel, I feel very knowledgeable though. I feel yeah, happy right? that I <laughs> that I know what I know now. Um, yeah. it's, it's slightly different to what I was expecting, actually. Mm. So it's good. Thank you yeah. so much. For, Thank um, you, Alex. Yeah. I'm just yeah. processing. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of like. Oh. So, is there... so, Wendy, you were you you said you wanted to nod only. Now you're yeah. saying you're processing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's my processing. <laughs> that's <laughs> how I process, yeah. So, so just, Alex, is there anything else that we should be thinking about? Anything else you want to mention about categories or um, how to work or what we should be thinking about or anything like that other than go buy Kalytics report on your genre? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think categories and keywords, which obviously belong together, are a very tactical, uh, super important, but a very tactical subject. Mm. Uh, but that's why I also like to show these, you know, eight year graphs of, of categories and, and things, because I, I think my mantra is very much this also elevation of, you know, what is the market doing and, yeah. and what are the trends within, you know, the tech mm. categories are very technical things. And in some instances, they do help at least pinpoint pockets of opportunities mm. and where things are happening. Mm. But uh, that's why in those genre reports that, you know, that we do, which go beyond the database, the pure technical thing, um, we construct our own bestseller mm. lists based on 90 day performance and sometimes more of, of books and weeding out all those polluted, you know, yeah. category pollution factors yeah. so that you can actually look at, well, what is a vigilante justice fiction bestseller list really with mm. without the mafia romance books in there that mm. that have been occupying yeah. the bestseller list yeah and and i think there it becomes interesting that you start really observing what is happening in a certain genre and and okay. i think that is important for your right to market efforts what are really the yeah. top selling covers which are trending yeah. what are the best price points there are so much I think sometimes even more important things to talk about in right to market than the pure discussion about categories and keywords, yeah. which is important. That's why yeah. we do what we do and others do what they do. Yeah. And, um, but it's only one little part in this a small cog in the wheel, in the yeah. cog wheels the, or ducks that you have to get in a row. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I just have a completely random question that just completely, do you mm. think that hockey romance comes in under um, romance in uniform? No, like hockey wearing room, uniforms. Uh, it because depends on the in team. Uniforms. They're wee yeah. team uniforms. Well, so are McDonald's workers. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So is this now yeah. we're going to have an yeah. influx of McDonald's worker um, romance? No, like, no thing? shade to McDonald's workers. Yeah, sorry. I, no, 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 I was a McDonald's Bell worker. Hop, just, but it's not exactly in a uniform, your alpha you know, but in a kind of. Well, whatever. I would consider my writer's uniform as my yoga pants and my sweatshirt, so I feel like butler, I could be in romance. A butler wearing his colours from the yeah. Regency era. Absolutely. Oh, anyway, well, sorry. I would still put it into romance sports, which yeah. is right. me too. for those. But, um, yeah, uh, no, fair maybe enough. Maybe it's your, for... uh, your secondary category, <clears throat> you know, just, just as a... <clears throat> Well, no doubt be polluted by that. So. <laughs> I'm going to be watching this uniforms um, category too. now. I'm going to be like, time, think what turns up in it. I don't know. I feel yeah. like it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, whatever. whatever yeah. tree. Okay. Um, so Alex, where is where is the best um, place for people to find out more information or find out about Kalytics or where do we go? Uh, very simple. You go to... Um... Uh, klytics.com which is k hyphen lytics like an analytics.com uh the k stands for a kindle that lost the indle to avoid uh, <laughs> any <laughs> trademark issues yeah. that's how we yeah. started 10 years ago um so k hyphen lytics.com and you know if you have questions about um individual reports you can always also um also email me at support at k-lytics.com. Uh, Let me just put it up here if you want. This has the email address in there. And, you know, just put in the um, put in the subject line podcast or attention, Alex, and it will be uh, routed to me. And, um, you know, with this, this is the simplicity of it. And we have a members area, we have the database, we have individual genre reports um, and, you know, serving anyone from fledgling author to some bigger publishing companies there, there should be something in for you. But if you are uncertain what's right for you, you can always shoot us uh, an email. Awesome. No, we've all used them, all highly yeah. recommend them. And yeah, also just so to, for anybody that's new to Kalodix reports, You've got videos explaining it as well as as yeah. well as the actual PDF report that you can print off. So and you've got access 
to work for ever. So yeah, it's great. Yeah, that, that's what we try to do because numbers can be very dry. Not everybody is or wants to be a math genius. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, we no, try no, to help. Certainly with, not a math with my, uh, explanations in the videos. Mm -hmm. I think Alex, Alex is losing his voice. We've talked about yeah. yes. I think oh I'm blaming God. Wendy. Alex, You've Alex caught Wendy's back. Wendy, Alex, and yeah. Alex. We've got well, I'm going to snip in there just at the end and say thank you so much again to Alex and just say um, find us at spargirlspodcast.com and you can come along and tell us your experiments that you've had with new categories and experiences on social yeah. media yeah. and at patreon.com forward slash spargirlspodcast if you'd like to support the show. So thank you so awesome. much to those who are listening and those who support us through Patreon. Mm, thank you so awesome. much thank you everyone for listening to another episode of the spark girls podcast we'll be back again next week but for now farewell bye bye bye, bye.